Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We want to show that regular expression and finite automata are equivalent. We have already said that to prove this, we need to prove two points. First is that given any regular expression R, we should be able to construct a finite automaton A, so that the language accepted by A is precisely the language represented by the regular expression. And then given any DFA A, we should be able to construct a regular expression, equivalent regular expression. That means, the language except by the finite automaton A is exactly the language dependent by R. So, we have already shown the first step in the last lecture. For any given regular expression, we have we constructed an equivalent finite automata A. In today's lecture, we are going to show the next step, the second step. That means, for that means, we want to prove this theorem. If A is a DFA, then L of A is regular. That means, there exists a regular expression R representing the same language L A accepted by the DFA A. So, we will prove this by induction on the numbers of states of the DFA A. Consider for base case the DFA to be say A is a DFA containing the set of states Q, alphabet sigma, delta is a transition map, Q naught is the star state and F is the set of states. So, for a base case, let us consider that this DFA A has only one state, only one state. So, that is the base case. So, in this case, there are two possibilities for the set of final states F that this DFA has. First, F equal to phi, that means there is no final states. In such a case, L of A the language accepted by A is nothing but the empty language, but this phi is a regular expression and hence this is regular. And then the other possibility is that F is a set of states that means the only state that the DFA has is a final state. In such a, such a case L A is nothing but sigma star, it accepts all strings over sigma, but sigma star is also regular and hence in both cases we have seen that this is there is a regular expression representing the language except by the finite automaton A. Now, let us consider that the result is true for all those DFA whose numbers of states is less than n. So, numbers of states less than n, the result is true. That means, for a DFA, day, DFA A, we can construct a regular expression. That means, the language accepted by the DFA is regular. So, let the DFA to be A containing the elements Q sigma delta q 0 f. Say numbers of states now is say n. So, first note that the language L accepted by the DFA A can be written as L equal to L 1 star L 2. So, where L 1 
is the set of strings that start and end in the initial state. q 0 and, and then L 2 is a set of strings that start in q 0 that start in q 0 the start state and end in some final state. That means, we can consider that say this is the star state q 0. So, from q 0 if a string leads us from q 0 to again q 0 say this after processing string q 0 on initial state q 0, if it brings us back to the same state q 0 and then suppose for again some other strings it again brings us to the same state q 0 then union of all those strings will be considered as L 1. And we can take this particular string any number of times because we can start q 0 come back to q 0 and continue again with the string and come back to q 0 we can take it any number of times that is why it is L 1 star. And then the other kinds of string is that start at q 0 and process the string eventually we arrive at some final state say q f 1. Similarly, you can process some other string and arrive at state q 0 and arrive at some other final state q f 2 and so on say q f k. So, consider the union of all those set of strings. So, first we take the strings of this kind from this language and then we take consider this is the language L 2 union of all those strings which leads us from q 0 to some final states q f q f 1 where q 0 is not an intermediate state over here in this part. So, we can take this string any number of times and then concatenate to it a string from L 2 and that will be the precise that, that, that will be precisely the language L except by this d f we include epsilon in L 2 if q 0 is a final state. If q 0 is a final state then epsilon belongs to L 2 we consider this situation. Now, using the inductive hypothesis we prove that both L 1 and L 2 are regular. That means, since L 1 and L 2 are regular, we have constructed L by using only regular oper operation L 1 star concatenation L 2. Therefore, L must also be regular. Now, we will be using the notations for defining language L 1 and L 2. Suppose, Q belongs to the set of states and x is a string over sigma star. Now, we will denote the set of states on the part of x from q that come after q that means, once you process the string x at state q then we will be we will arrive at some set of states and those set of states is basically denoted as p q x. So, if you consider x to be a 1, a 2 up to suppose some a n. So, after processing the string a 1, a 2 up to i. 
then we will arrive at some state starting with i equal to 1 up to n. We take the union of all those states that is the set of states that will reach if we process the string x at state q and we denote this to be p q x. So, p q x is a set of states that we arrive at by processing the string x at some state q. Now, we define L 1 to be the set of strings x belonging to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 x equal to q 0. So, we have defined L 1 to be the set of all strings x such that processing x at initial state q 0 eventually leads us to the same state q 0 by this self loop. Similarly, L 2 is basically L 3 if q 0 does not belong to f and it is equal to L 3 union epsilon if q 0 belongs to f where L 3 basically the set of strings x belonging to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 x belongs to f okay, write it. So, where L 3 is the set of strings x belonging to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 x belongs to the set of final state. That means, if we process the string x at initial set q 0, we eventually reach one of the final states f and then q 0 does not come in the pot while processing x. That means, q 0 does not belong to p q 0 x according to our notation that we have just defined. So, clearly L equal to L 1 star L 2, because you can take the strings of this form L 1 from, from L 1 in number of primes and if we concatenate with L 2 eventually we reach or arrive at one of the final states of the DFA A. Therefore, this any string of this form will be accepted by the DFA A and hence is a language precisely this is a language accepted by the DFA. Now, we will first prove that L 1 is regular. That means, there is a regular expression for a language L 1 and then we will prove that L 2 is regular. If we can prove that L 1 and L 2 both are regular, then L must also be regular, because we have considered L by using only regular operations. Now, to prove that L 1 is regular, we consider the set say A is a set, the set of pairs of this form say A B, where A B, A and B are symbols from sigma. That means, it belongs to sigma cross sigma, such that delta hat q 0 A x B equal to q 0 for some string x belonging to sigma star. for some x belonging to sigma star and then delta q 0 a is not equal to q 0. That means, if we process a taking single symbol a at q 0, it does not come back to q 0, it will go to some other state and then q 0 does not belong to the set of states p q 0 x that means, it does not come in the pot while processing x at state q 0. 
So this is q q zero does not belong to q a x. That means q zero does not come in the part while process x at state q a where q a is nothing but the state that we get while taking the input symbol a at state q 0. Since we have already said that delta q 0 a is not equal to q 0, it must be some other state and I call it say q a. And while processing the string x at state q a, q 0 does not come again in the part. Now, for this pair a b belonging to the set a, we define the language L A B. So, for the pair A B, we define the language A B, L A B is a set of all strings x belonging to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 A x B equal to q 0 and q 0 does not come in the part P Q A X, where Q A is nothing but delta Q 0 A. So, we'll define the language L A B like this. Now, we will show that L A B this language we have just defined is the language accepted by the following DFA so A A B. So, A A B is a DFA we define it like this is Q dash sigma delta dash Q A is a star state and F dash. So, where Q dash is nothing but the pre set of previous states except for the star set q 0. So, we leave out the star set from the original set of states and that is the set of states of the new DFA A A B. And q A the star state of this DFA is nothing but the state that we arrive at by taking the input symbol A at state q 0. And the set of fun sets F dash is all those states belong to the set q such that delta q b that means when you process eventually this last symbol b whenever it goes to q 0 then all those states q for which taking symbol b it goes to state q 0 is considered to be a final state except for of course, the state q 0, q 0 is not in the set of states. And delta this we retain the same set of transition functions with a restriction that it is from q dash cross sigma to q dash. Now, suppose the string x belongs to L of a b. So, clearly a b is a DFA. Suppose the string x belongs to L of a b. Now, since q 0 does not belong to the set of states in this new DFA A A B and Q 0 also does not belong to the set of states that we can arrive at by processing while processing the string starting at Q A the star state and 
delta this hat q a x belongs to f this whenever say x belongs to this language of this d f a. Therefore, this implies that delta hat q 0 a x b is nothing but delta hat delta q a x b. That means, first process symbol a at state star state q 0 and then compute the process the string x b at that state considering this extend transition function. Therefore, this can be written as delta hat since delta q 0 a is nothing but q a. So, this is x b, but this can be written as delta delta hat q a x. So, first process the string x therefore, we used the extent range function and then compute delta of whatever we receive at that state we compute delta of that state b. So, this is nothing but delta of some p where p is the state that we arrive at after processing this string x at state q a. So, delta p b where p must belong to the set of final states because this thing is accepted by this d f a. Hence, p must belong to some final set according to our definition. According to our definition, this is delta p b is q 0. So, that since delta hat q 0 a x b equal to q 0 according to our definition of the language L a b, we know that this, is not, this string x belongs to L a b. The converse is also similar that means, converse is also similar we can prove it similarly that means, if a string x belongs to L a b this x will be accepted by the d f a L d f a a a b. Hence, what I have done is that in the d f a a a b the d f a a a b the numbers of states we have is exactly n minus 1 because we have already omitted the star state q 0 from the set of states that means, q dash contains all states in q except for q 0 and numbers of states in the d f a a a b is exactly n minus 1. Therefore, according to induction hypothesis the language l a b is regular. Now, if we write the set say b to b all symbols a belonging to sigma such that delta q 0 a equal to q 0 union the string epsilon. Then clearly you can we will see that the language L 1 that we have already defined is nothing but this B union set of all strings of this form A L A B then B, where this pair A B belongs to the set A and this language L 1 we have constructed by taking union of a regular set this set is regular set B is regular we have shown L A B to be regular we have concatenated with A and B. So, A concatenation L A B concatenation B and have taken the union of those regular languages therefore, L 1 must be regular since we have constructed L 1 by using some regular operations over some regular 
languages. Therefore, L1 is regular. Hence, we have seen that L1 is regular. Now, we have to prove that the language L2 is also regular. Now, to, to prove this claim too that L 2 is regular, we consider a set say C, the set of all symbols A belonging to sigma such that delta Q 0 A not equal to Q 0. So, when you process or take the symbol A at the start state Q 0, it does not go to Q 0 again. And for a symbol A belonging to C, we define the language L A to be the set of all strings x belonging to sigma star such that delta hat q 0 A x start with A symbol A and process the string x that eventually leads us to some final state and q 0 does not appear on the path while processing it from that state q a where q a is exactly that state that we arrive at taking a symbol a at the star state q 0. Now, for symbol A belonging to the set C, we construct a DF A, which is exactly say Q des sigma delta des Q A and F double des, where Q des is a set of states Q except for the star state Q 0. That means, this D F A A contains call it this call this D F A to be say A A. This D F A A contains one state less than the previous D F A. And then Q A is the star state of this D F A A A is exactly delta Q 0 A the state that we arrive at by taking symbol A on state Q 0 and the set of final states F double des is nothing but all those states final states of the previous D F A except for the star state Q 0 and delta des is again the restriction of delta to delta des is basically a restriction of delta to q des cross sigma. Now, it is easy to observe that L of a the language accepted by the D F A A A is exactly L A. Now, first note that q 0 does not appear in the context of L A and L A A. Now, if x any string x belongs to sigma star belongs to L of A A language of this D F A A A. So, this belongs to this language of D F A if and only if delta des hat q 0 sorry q a x because the star set is q a process string x it eventually belongs to some final state of this D F A since q 0 does not appear this if and only if delta does hat q a x belongs to f since you have written all the final, final states of the previous d f a. This if and only if delta hat because we have written the same 
transition function restricted to the new set of states, we can replace delta rest by delta. So, if this belongs to f. If that is the case, we can write it like this, it is delta dash q g. So, appending a or taking taking a at the beginning, if we start at q 0, take a since q a is nothing but q 0 a, if we take delta, we can write it as delta q 0 a x if this belongs to f. So, this simply this q a is written as delta q 0 a, this if and only if delta hat we can write it as delta we can write it as since this delta q 0 a x we can write it as delta hat q 0 a x x and transition function process the substring the process string a x if this belongs to f since q 0 does not appear. So, this implies that according to our definition of the language L a, we know that this is nothing but x belongs to L of a. So, we have shown that if x belongs to x belongs to L of a a, if and only if x belongs to L a. So, again the numbers of states in Q dash is exactly n minus 1, because we have omitted the star state q 0 in a a a. Therefore, by inductive hypothesis the language l a is regular, but clearly the language l 3 is nothing but union of all those languages a l a just concurrent a with l a and for all a belong to the set c. Therefore, L 3 is also regular, hence L 3 is regular. Hence, this completes the proof of the theorem. That means, given any DFA a, the corresponding language accepted by the DFA is regular. That means, we can always construct a regular expression for the language accepted by the DFA. Now, let us give an example. Consider the DFA given by the transition function here, say q 0 is a star state. On A, it remains at q 0. On symbol B, it goes to state q 1. q 1 on A, it comes to state q 0 and on B, it goes to q 2, where q 2 is a final state. q 2 on A comes back to state q 0 and on B, it remains the same state q 2. Consider this DFA. Now, we know that the following strings bring the DFA following strings brings the bring the DFA from q 0 back to q 0. That means, those are strings that will be there in the language L 1 for this particular DFA for A means via the path q 0 q 0 because you can take the self loop start q 0 on A, it will remain q 0. Then again, if we take the this part from q 0 to q 1, then again back to q 0 taking A, we will get the string B A. Then let us take the part start at q 0, go to q 1 and back to q 0. And then, we can also consider the part, we can from q 0 you go to q 1 on B, from q 1 you go to q 2 on b and on any numbers of 
B, you remain at Q2 and eventually on taking following this path taking an A, you come back to Q0. That means, for n greater than equal to 0, the strings of the form B, B, B to the power n A. So, all those strings will bring us back from Q0 to Q0 again. If we take the path Q0, Q1, Q2, then you remain at Q2 for as many times as we want by taking a B and eventually by taking an A you come back to Q0. That is one possibility. Thus, L1 can be written as string A or B A or B B B to the power n A for n greater than equal to 0. Again, since Q0 is not a final state, Q0 is not a final state, therefore, L2, the set of strings which take the DF from Q0 to the final state Q2, there is only one final state. From star set Q0, what kind of string brings us from Q0 to the final state Q2, where Q0 is not in the path? It will be of the form we have to take this B taking B, we will have to go to Q 1 and from Q 1, we can taking B, we can go to Q 2 and we can take n numbers of time this B in a self loop. Therefore, L 2 is basically of the form B B B to the power n, where n is greater than equal to 0. Now, L 1 is of the form or L 1 can be written as or expressed by the regular expression A or B A or B B B star A and L 2 can be written as B B B star. Thus, as per the construction of our theorem, the language expressed by DFA is basically L which is L 1 star L 2. That means, this can be written as or express by the regular expression A or B A or B B B star A star this is L 1 this star L 2 L 2 is basically B B B star. So, this is the regular expression corresponding to this L 2. So, L 1 star L 2. So, these are regular expression corresponding to language L except by the D F A. Now, what we will do is that the uh, our main point is that given any DFA A, we will be able to construct an equivalent regular expression and we, we can always construct an equivalent regular expression in the sense that the language dependent by this regular expression R is exactly the language expressed by the DFA A. Now, how to construct a regular expression R for equivalent regular expression R for any given DFA A? So, there is an algebraic method given by Brozowski that means, Brozowski So, there is an algebraic method which was proposed by Brozowski. We will we'll just now we will now discuss this Brozowski's algebraic method for construction of a regular action for any given DFA. Let A be a DFA containing uh, the tuple represented by the tuple quintuple Q sigma delta Q 0 f, where the set of states is basically Q 0, Q 1 up to say Q 1, there are n numbers of states. And the set of final states we have say k numbers of final sets say q f 1, q f 2 up to say q f k. Now, for every i, uh, every state q i belong to the set of states q, right. Say r i is a set of strings that means the language or set of strings belong to sigma star. 
such that delta hat q 0 x equal to q 1. That means, if we process the string x at the initial state q 0, process the string x at the initial state q 0, eventually we will arrive at the state q 1. You collect all those strings x to construct the set R i. Now, we will note that the language of this DFA is nothing but union of all those sets R f i, where i equal to 1 to k, because if we consider for every set q f 1, the corresponding set R f 1, R f 2 and R f k. And if we take all those things, take the union of all those things, that is exactly the language of the DFA. Hence, L A can be written as the language of DFA can be written as union of all those sets R F i for i equal to 1 to k. Now, in order to construct a regular expression for L A, for the language of A, we propose an unknown for each R i, say it is R i, small r i. So, for each R i, we propose an unknown say regular action say small r i. We observe that r f 1 plus r f 2 up to say r f k is exactly is a regular expression for the language of the DFA L A. Suppose, say sigma i j subscript i j is a set of those symbols, set of those symbols. of sigma, which take the d f a a from the state q i to the state q j. Just assume that sigma i j this notation is used for the set of those symbols of sigma, which take the d f a a from the state q i to q j. That means, sigma i j is nothing but all the symbols a belong to sigma such that delta q i a equal to q j. That is what exactly we have defined. Clearly, as it is a finite set, sigma i j is regular with a regular expression as sum of its symbols. Whatever the symbols will be there, if we sum it up that will be a regular expression for sigma i j is always finite and you can write a regular expression for that. Now, let s i j s subscript i j be the expression that expression for sigma i j. So, whatever regular expression we get say so denoted by s i j. Now, for say j greater than equal to 1, less than equal to n, since the strings of r j are precisely taking the strings of r j are precisely taking the d f a from q 0 to any state q i, then reaching q j with symbols or with the symbols of sigma i j. We have 
R j to be, we can write it as R 0 sigma 0 j. So, R 0 is a set of strings that takes us from q 0 to q 0 and then just consider one symbol which will, which will take from q 0 to j q j denoted by sigma 0 j union r 1 sigma 1 j set of all those strings which takes the d f a from q 0 to q 1 and from q 1 to q j on a single symbol from of say sigma 1 j like that union r i sigma i j and eventually r n sigma n j. So, any r j can be written as the union of all those and in the case of r 0, it is basically r 0 sigma 0 0 union r i sigma i 0 to say r n sigma n 0. Union of course, we have this string empty string epsilon as epsilon takes the DFA from q 0 to itself without taking any input that is why we have taken epsilon at the end. Thus, for each j we have the equation for r j which depending on all r i's called the characteristic of r j So, we can write the system of characteristic equation of A as R 0 is basically R 0 S 0 0 plus R 1 S 1 0 plus R i S i 0 plus like that R n S and 0 plus epsilon then r 1 can be written as r 0 s 0 1 plus r 1 s 1 1 r i s i 1 plus r n s and 1 and so on for r j you can write it as r 0 s 0 j plus r 1 s 1 j. r i s i j plus r n s n j. Similarly, for r n it is r 0 s 0 n plus r 1 s 1 n plus like that r i s i n eventually r n s n n. So, this is how we can write the character equation for a for its state q 0 through q n we have the corresponding regular expression r 0 r 1 up to r n. Now, the system can be solved this system can be solved for r f i's because r f 1, r f 2 up to r f k these are all set of final states and since the language of this d f a is nothing but r f 1 
plus R F 2 up to plus R F K. Solving for these R F i's, we can eventually find out the language regular expression for a language of the D F A A. So, this will be the corresponding regular expression. Now, we can solve it for probability system equation for RFIs that means, for the final states for the final states via straightforward substitution except the same unknown may appear on both sides on both the left and right hand side of the equation same unknown may appear. So, this situation can be handled using one principle called Arden's principle. Arden's principle which says that if S and T are regular expression and R is an unknown, an equation of the form R equal to T plus R S, where this unknown appears on both side, left hand side and right hand side, and where epsilon does not belong to language of S. So, it has a unique solution given by R equal to T S star. The solution is basically R equal to T S star. So, this is what is called Arden's principle, and you can use this Arden's principle whenever this unknown R is appears in both sides of the equation. So, by success, successive substitutions and application of Arden's principle, we can evaluate the expression for final states in terms of symbols from sigma. Since the expression or the operations involved here are admissible for regular expression, we eventually obtain regular expression for R F i. So, we demonstrate this by an example. Consider the D F a containing only two states where q 1 is a final state, q 1 is a q 0 is a star state. On a it goes to final state, on b it remains the same state q 1 on b remains the same state and on a it comes to the star state. Now, the characterization for the for, for this d f a will be say r 0 equal to it is r 0 b it takes r 0 and on b it will remain the same state plus it will be r 1 a because from this state on a we come to this state r 0. So, it is r 1 a plus epsilon because this is the initial state. So, this is what we have got a equation for the star state regular action for the star state. Similarly, for the state q 1 the equation is it is for r 1 is r 0 a plus r 1 b. Since, q 1 is a final state r 1 represents the language of the D F A, because there is only one final state that is q 1 is the final state. is the only final state, hence R 1 represents the language of D F A. So, we have to solve these two equations for R 1. So, we will solve this equation for in terms of for R 1 in terms of A and B, which are the only symbols in the alphabet. Now, by Arden's principle, we will see that if we consider first equation R 0 equal to R 0 B plus R 1 A plus epsilon r 0 can be written as epsilon plus r 1 a b star. Now, substituting this in the second equation here we see that r 1 is r 0 a means epsilon plus r 1 a b star a plus r 1 b. So, it is r 1 b. Now, simplifying this we can write it as 
B star A plus R 1 A B star A plus B. This is just by simplifying. Then by applying again since R 1 appears on the both right hand side and left hand side, again applying Arden's principle on R 1, we get R 1 to be B star A A B star A plus B star. Now, which is a regular, which is a desired regular expression represent the language for the given DFA in the example. Similarly, if we consider the next example, say we have three states, Q 1 is the star state on A it goes to Q 2 which is also a final state, Q 1 and Q 2 are final, final states on B remain the same state, Q 2 on A goes to Q 3 which on A B remains in the same state and Q 2 on B goes to the star state. Now, for this we can write a characteristic question as R 1 for the state Q 1 as R 1 B because R 1 on B remain the same state plus from Q 2 you can come to Q 1 on B. So, it is R 2 B and from Q 3 we cannot come to Q 1 and since this is a star state this is a star state epsilon will be there. Then for state Q 2 R 2 can be written as from R 1 you can go to Q 2 on A therefore, it is R 1 A from Q 2 you cannot go to Q 2 and from Q 3 you cannot come to Q 2 therefore, it is the only term on the right hand side. Similarly, R 3 can be written as from Q 2 I can come to Q 3 on A. So, it is R 2 A and from Q 3 on A and B both A and B A or B I can come to Q 3 again. So, R 3 A plus B. Now, since Q, Q 1 and Q 2 are final states the expression for the regular expression R 1 plus R 2 will represent the language for this given DFA. So, we will solve these equations for R 1 and R 2 in terms of A and B. Now, if we substitute R 2 in R 1, so substitute this R 2 in R 1, we will find that R 1 equal to R 1 B plus this R 2 can be replaced by R 1 A B plus epsilon. This is nothing but R 1 B plus A B plus epsilon. Now, applying Arden's principle, you will find that R 1 can be written as epsilon B plus A B star, which is nothing but B plus A B star. Thus, R 1 plus R 2 can be written as B plus A B star plus since R 2 is R 1 A therefore, it is B plus A B star A. Hence, the regular expression for this DFA is nothing but this is simply B plus A B star epsilon or A. So, therefore, this is a corresponding regular expression for the given DFA. Therefore, using Arden's principle and solving the characteristic equation for the given DFA in terms of the symbols of the language, we can always find out the equivalent regular expression for the given DFA by using this Brazoisky's algebraic method.